Ya. CBN leaves forest ban on 43 items to intervene in FX market. Why HPV vaccine matters in preventing cervical cancer. Those are the topics we're going to be dealing with this morning. And of course, we're also going to have a to look at what the papers are saying on Off the Press this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Today is Friday and a lot of people will say thank God it's Friday. That is for those people who have weekends because some duties you have to do even at the weekends. So weekend can be any day of the week that you have rest and you don't have to go to work. But for the majority of the people, it's a weekend. So let's just loosen up, unwind, and make sure that after work, you're going to rest and uh, do other things that are not routine to you. That is the actual rest that we will be talk or we always talk about. Because when you say, I want to rest, it doesn't mean that you will not be doing any other activity. It just means that you're going to break routine and do something else that will really give you pleasure. Once again, good morning and welcome. In the course of the last 24 hours, we had some things that uh, gave us some interest. And one of them is that President Tinubu has appointed Ola Olukayede as EFCC chairman. So we'll be looking at that on the top trending. The president, Bola Tinubu, appointed Ola Olukoyode as chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The presidential spokesman, Ajurin Gilali, announced this in a statement on Thursday. Gilali explained that Olukoyode, uh, Olukoyode's appointment is for a renewable term of four years in the first instance, pending Senate confirmation. The leadership of the country's focal anti-graft agency has experienced shake-up in the last few months since the assumption of the presidency by President Tinubu on May 29, 2023. And on June 14, 2023, the president suspended Abdul Rashid Bawa indefinitely as the anti-graft agency boss, which according to Ngilali was to allow for proper investigation into his conduct while in office based on allegations of abuse of office leveled against him. The president subsequently directed the director of operations at the commission, Abdul Karim Chukol, to step in as acting EFCC chair, while the Department of State Services, DSS, took Bauer into custody. However, with Thursday's appointment, Olukoyede becomes the new helmsman of the commission and followed the resignation of Bauer. Presidential spokesman Gilali said the decision of the president to appoint Olukoyede as new EFCC boss was derived from the powers vested in him as established in Section 2, Subsection 3 of the EFCC Establishment Act 2004. Mr. Ola Olukoyede is a lawyer with over 22 years of experience as a regulatory compliance consultant and specialist in fraud management and corporate intelligence, as well as extensive experience in the operations of the EFCC, having previously served as Chief of Staff to the Executive Chairman 2016 to 2018 and Secretary to the Commission 2018 to 2023. Also pending Senate confirmation is the President's appointment of Mohammed Hama Joda to serve as a secretary of the EFCC for a renewable term of five years in the first instance. We do hope that the EFCC will have some sanity. We do hope that it is um, the conspiracy theorist will be proven wrong because a lot of people are saying when you fight corruption, corruption fights you back. And that's the problem that Bauer and even Magu uh, have been facing because they were investigating past governors and very powerful people in our country and so that is what is biting them we do hope that that is false information or a false theory and then we are going to see very very new and uh, very gladdening things 
happening uh, in the EFCC. We do hope that transparency will be a watchword for the EFCC. Let them do their work and let Nigeria be cleaner than it is right now. So we congratulate him. Uh, we hope that the Senate will pass him or give him a nod if he qualifies the way they say he qualifies. Now, military de deactivates uh, 53 illegal refining sites, apprehends uh, 19 suspects is another trending issue that we'd like to talk about. Remember, the defense headquarters says troops of Operation Delta Save have uncovered and deactivated 53 illegal refining sites, recovered stolen products, and apprehended 19 suspects, suspected oil thieves in one week. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, disclosed this while briefing newsmen on the operations of the armed forces of Nigeria across the country on Thursday in Abuja. Buba said the troops had sustained momentum against crude oil theft in the Niger Delta region. He said the troops discovered and destroyed 54 dugout pits, 66 boats, 138 storage tanks, 253 cooking ovens, two pumping machines, eight speedboats, 17 horses, 18 drums and two cylinders. And according to him, the troops also recovered 983,350 liters of stolen crude oil, 144,980 liters of illegally refined AGO, and 71,650 liters of DPK, neutralizing one criminal in the process. Rescued three hostages and recovered one fabricated rifle, 18 vehicles, and one torchlight. In the southeast, Buba said the troops of Operation Udoka conducted snap operations and arrested suspected IPOP ESN, ESN in Iko and Okigwe local government areas of Ebonyi and Imo states during the week. He also said the troops neutralized five terrorists, arrested 12 suspected criminals, and rescued seven kidnapped hostages. According to him, and I quote, uh, troops recovered two locally made guns, four rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammo, one FN rifle barrel, IED materials, 10 water gel explosives, three detonators, and one detonating cord, among others, with all recovered items arrested, suspects, and rescued hostages being handed over to the relevant authority for further action. The defense spokesman said the military had uncovered then and neutralized some of the criminal safe havens across various theaters of operation. He also revealed that criminals used national parks, game reserves, and forests across the country as their hideouts. We also have the story that motorists have raised concerns over corpses on Lagos Ibadan Highway. Some motorists along the Mowe Ibafo area have expressed concerns over the rising cases of corpses being dumped along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Uh, the motorists expressed fear of disease outbreak and the security threat that such recurring issue may pose to them. It was also gathered that there was a corpse dumped opposite mountain top university axis of the road on Tuesday, while there was a similar case recently. The police public relations officer Ogun State Command Omolola Odutola has advised residents to always report such incidents to the divisional police officer in their area while noting that she had informed the nearest police point for necessary action. So whenever you see something, say something. It's just that a lot of people fear that when you make a report of that nature, sometimes you're being roped in. Uh, whatever be the case, do your duty and leave the rest to God. The police is not always like that. You know, you, you can't say because you're reporting a case of someone who is at the roadside or you're rescuing a life or you're, you've seen a cops by the roadside and you go and report, you will always enter into trouble. You will not always enter into trouble. Do your duty as a good citizen of Nigeria and forget about what you have been hearing because the police can actually be your friend. And we need to keep our environment, our, our society safe by reporting all the things that we think should not be happening in our locality. So wherever you are, if you see something, like they always say, say something.
We're going to take a short break and when we return, Jide Johnson hopefully will be joining us for us to look at the headlines. Stay with us. <laughs> 